The Further Adventures of Those Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers by Gilbert Shelton. I think this is 1971. This is going to be difficult for me to explain to younger viewers. The world was, well, I was going to say the world was a different place in the 70s, but you are, if you are a goat herder in Bumfuckistan in the 70s, and your kid is a goat herder, then things aren't too different. Except now you can download Prawn on your cell phone before you introduce your goat to interspecies erotica. Kids today will just see this as racist. And because the guys who wrote this are far-left hippies, you might expect me to dunk on the leftists. But actually, I'm going to defend them, because they might be far-left, but they aren't bigots. If you notice, they make fun of Europeans, Christians, Jews, and Africans. Even more, they make fun of cops, hippies, bikers, straights, and squares. This comedy has no sacred cows. It's pure and as fair and impartial as comedy could get. And back in the 70s, the hippies believed in free speech. And most of them believed in closed borders. Most Mexican Americans didn't want illegals sneaking in because they knew illegals lowered wages. The conservatives of today are closer to these dope-smoking hippies than the hippies are to Antifa. Think about that for a second. The hippies actually lived on communes. They put their beliefs to the test, and, it's true, most of the communes failed after a few years. Antifa kids won't be forming communes anytime soon. The left was very different in the 70s. They wanted equal rights, but they weren't ass-kissing. You could still be the butt of their jokes. They weren't racist, they were offensive. There's a huge difference. Sometime in the 90s, cultural Marxism crept in, and their sinister influence eroded the social infrastructure. The rot started in the 60s. It sort of started when McCarthyism ended. Kids learned in school about how silly McCarthy was and how the Red Scare was nonsense, because in the 70s through the 90s, people still remembered how brutal communism was. Stories of the communist atrocities in Eastern Europe, Russia, China, Southeast Asia, Cuba... Wherever communism went, civil rights vanished. The Antifa kids today haven't bothered to talk to anyone who had to live under communism. By any name, communism is slavery. I have to imagine most Antifa kids are from single moms and probably on medication. If they saw comics like this, they would scream, RACIST! This comic was written by left-wing, dope-smoking hippies. If you notice, all the characters are exaggerations, but the kids today ignore that and only focus on one group. Seems odd. Two points. One, they confuse being a dick with being a racist. Just because two races are disagreeing over an issue, it doesn't mean they're being racist to each other. Two, it deals with cultural Marxism. In the 60s and 70s, different races were getting more comfortable around each other. I, I know... Yeah, it, it, that the, the historical narrative is that this is uh, that the sixties and seventies were a hotbed of people just hating each other. There were protests like there are now, but um, most of the narrative that the left wing is pushing is is a complete and utter lie. People were starting to share cultures and borrowing culture from each other. No, cultural appropriation doesn't exist. It's a term invented by Marxists and globalists to destroy a nation. In the 60s and 70s, people were sitting down and smoking J's and talking about issues. People were all for free speech, for having a dialogue. CNN, MSNBC, Antifa are terrified by dialogue. They want censorship, they want monologue, with only their speech being heard. They want to control comments and chat rooms and social media. Can you imagine a news company removing comments from their website? The cultural Marxists don't want Europeans, Africans, Latinos getting together and possibly grouping themselves by economic class. Marxists want racial groups, and they want the groups fighting. If you look at who funds black and Latino identitarian groups, it's people like Soros or the uh, ADL, SPLC, ACLU. They are racist groups that get scared when Afro, Euro, Latino groups come together. The Soros groups want Americans hating each other. I used to hear Soros all the time, and some of the people who talk about it are a little out there, a little wild-eyed. But then I looked into it. 
I would find that, yes, it was Soros funding many of these groups, but it would be a step removed. The Soros Foundation would fund a group that owned a wholly owned subsidiary, but the money would always trace back to Soros. You start connecting the dots and come to the conclusion that Soros, ADL, ACLU, SPLC, their goal is to destroy the U.S. and Western Europe. They want to keep people fighting, so we don't notice them behind the curtain, pulling the strings. But people are noticing who's pulling the strings. Another thing. In the 70s and 80s, hippies and freaks were poor. It wasn't until the 90s that the standard of living went up so fast. Now the Antifa kids are middle class or wealthy. Hippies used to be poor and dirty. It's another story. There used to be all different types of hippies. The weed, mushroom, and acid types versus the harder dope scene which got dark very quickly anyway check out the uh this is <laughs> this is when it gets my got my attention when i read this uh earlier check out the further adventures of the fabulous furry freak brothers if you're under 40 you probably think everyone in the 70s was racist and sexist and stone check this uh, i don't know if you're just listening to this or if you got this far but pay attention to this uh this scene N- note the uh characters um in the 60s and 70s people weren't necessarily racist they were just very racially insensitive but it wasn't like today where the cultural marxists tried and mostly failed to establish an oppression hierarchy back in the 70s everyone was a dick to everyone else the irish would make fun of the germans who would make fun of the africans who would make fun of the mexicans who would make fun of the french who made fun of the jews who made fun of the christians People understood the difference between being a legitimate racist and just being a jerk. And there were plenty of both, but people understood that every race had its share of racists. That was just how humans acted. People were jerks, but we didn't treat people like babies. The Polish have been horribly marginalized and oppressed. They suffered under German fascism and under Russian communism. The Polish people are still shaking off the shadow of communism. And in America, people told Polish jokes. Polish would come back with a joke about your ethnicity. You might fight or you might laugh. But nowadays, you would jump on Twitter and complain about uh, Nazi bigots being racist to poor, oppressed Polish people. You would start a Polish pride support group. You'd probably have t-shirts. When I got to this scene in the comic, it was like um, cold water being thrown on me. Because you don't expect to see an image like this. The um, the black guy with the kind of the cliche lips and immediately seeing this thing. Oh, my, what am I looking at here? It must be racist. And then I re- remember what I had read earlier. Um, if you read this, the, the Freak Brothers comics, everyone is lampooned in the comic book. Every every group. If you look at some of the earlier characters, they are lampooned also. I mean, notice the guy standing next to him is looking like a jackass. And I know uh, if you're under a certain age now, you look at this now and you just can't understand. You think, oh, well, these writers must be must be racist. They must be sexist. They must be this and that, fascist. No, the guy who wrote this and drew this uh, is uh, pretty far left. And uh, I guarantee you he's uh, probably not racist. Um, it was just, it involves the, the concept of uh, things being relative to the time period. Jesus Christ and Chairman Mao. Um, things being relative to the, the time period. Um, uh, can you say this now? God damn it, now I'll have to go over there myself. Fucking feminist nurse. Sorry about that. I'm sick of lemons. Goyim, I'm sick of... Now this time when you go over there, don't for, forget to bring your bag like you did last time. Uh, this Jewish doctor is going over to a, a health clinic where he's... Uh, they think... Uh, this is kind of a joke about mental health, um, STIs, sexual harassment, and um, uh, RA, I'll call it sexual battery. I can't say the R word. Um, they managed to include all these racist and sexist and ist and ist and isms and phobes and whatever, all this, all this humor. Um, they think he's, that his friends think, her friends think that he's going to um, commit a battery upon her. Uh, of course, he's just there to check up on her. But the thing is, when people read this nowadays, they only read, you only see one part of it, and you see, oh my gosh, how dare you speak to a woman this way? How dare you make her the butt of your humor? 
they're making everyone the butt of the humor. These guys are idiots. She's an idiot. They misunderstand each other. The doctor's an idiot. Everyone's a character. Everyone is being made fun of. And then they go back to making fun of mentally ill people. Um, this kind of humor is refreshing in a way. Because it, um, I mean, they feel free to make fun of Christians, Jews, the right, the left, um, just about everybody. <sighs> seeing this kind of humor is seeing the opposite of racism and bigotry. I know that's, that's really hard for people, if you're under 40, to understand that this stuff, it's, uh... Well, just read it. You can you can check it out for yourself. It's um, the fabulous furry freak brothers available anywhere. Anyway, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Leave a like and a comment, and check out uh, Gilbert Shelton's "The Further Adventures of Those Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers." I think we need more of comedy like this. <laughs>